y'all, Scott here. It's truly an awful situation when you re-experience something you initially loved, but upon further inspection, it's just not as good as you remember it being. I'm of course talking about Eczema. Tried it again, wasn't into it. Anyways, I'm gonna replay Mario 3D Land. 3D Mario, a staple of 3D Mario games. The 3D Mario lineage is an important one. Every single game stands on its own as a monumental moment in gaming history, each one bringing with it innovations in design, control, playstyle, and just gaming in general. A new 3D Mario game was, is, and forever will be an event. They don't happen all the time, but when they do, they scared the shit out of me. They don't happen all the time. This isn't normal. Each 3D Mario is unique and special in their own way, and most people take playing through each and every one as a sign of being human. But every family has a daughter you don't dislike. Super Mario 3D Land for the Nintendo 3DS. Yes, this is one of the best Nintendo 3DS games ever made. It saved the system from performing slightly below expectations. It successfully transitioned 3D Mario into 3D Mario. It uses the Y button. How come people don't talk about it? Whenever 3D Mario comes up, 3D Land is very, very rarely thrown into the combo. Was there a statewide ban or am I just talking to the wrong people? Because the Sunoco cashier had nothing to say about this. Well, that Nintendo 3DS was something special, wasn't it? Basically, a DS with a fancy new areola and a 3D screen that doesn't need glasses. Sure, I'll bite. What kind of games are on it? You sure you don't want to talk about the headphone jack? Yeah, the 3DS was struggling throughout its first year on the market with a lack of heavy hitting titles. We got Ocarina of Time 3D, Star Fox 64 3D, and games like Pilot Wings Resort and Steel Diver, but these were remakes or such minute titles that nobody really had much of a reason to blow 250 bones on three terrible cameras. There was pretty much nothing too awful worthwhile to play on the handheld for that first year, but that didn't mean it didn't have promise. We knew about so many big games coming in the future. Buying a 3DS in 2011 was more of an investment, if anything. Kid Icarus, Animal Crossing, Resident Evil, Paper Mario, Mario Kart, Metal Gear, Kingdom Hearts, Smash Brothers, you may have had to play Pokemon Rumble Blast, but considering what was coming, it was worth it. Maybe. Especially since we were getting a brand new 3D Mario game for the portable. Now, this was big news. This was 2011. We were hot off the heels of Super Mario Galaxy 2 releasing in 2010. That was considered a good video game, so when they were making another video game, I think we had every right to believe it would be good. But of course, what made this special was the fact it was a 3D Mario game in your hands. Now, 2D Marios have been a constant on the Nintendo handhelds, but back in November 2010, Shigeru Miyamoto confirmed that they were not only developing a new 2D Mario for the 3DS, but a 3D one as well. To be fair, Super Mario 64 DS holds the record for first portable 3D Mario game, but it was a remake of Super Mario 64, so give it a drink. Formally revealed on March 2nd, 2011 at the Game Developers Conference, Super Mario for Nintendo 3DS looked exactly how you'd expect it to. I mean, hearing that they're making a new 3D Mario game and seeing these screenshots, it is one. It looked like a mixture of the more typical theming of Super Mario 64 with the streamlined yet out there level design of Super Mario Galaxy 2. It looked quality, but where's the tail? You may notice something that looks like a tail at the bottom on the logo. Oh, I'm not pissed. 2011 was right when many game developers were starting to actually react to the retro boom. The internet was always going on and on about how the world was better in 1990. Remember how Super Mario Bros. 3 came out? Loads of retro game discussions consisted of how Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES was the best Mario game of all time, and one of the core reasons often given was the awesome power-ups. And the big one at display here was Raccoon Mario, being able to whack enemies with your tail and glide and fly. Yeah, you were a raccoon, of course you could do that. Obviously, loads of nostalgia and love for Super Mario Bros. 3 existed and still exists, so Nintendo decided to capitalize on that by injecting a bit of Mario 3 into Mario 3D. I mean, this was awesome. Just the idea of being able to fly like you could in that old game made this one infinitely more interesting, because as it stood, there wasn't a ton to get excited about outside of it being a new 3D Mario on a handheld. So when E3 2011 came around, Nintendo had a ton of oddly shaped screens at their press conference that they finally decided to put some use to. They had these CGI animations representing the major Nintendo 3DS games they were about to go into detail about and one of them was for Mario 3DS. Mario comes in, jumps around, and gets a power-up. I never cared for Mario, but I'm liking the new direction. This power-up ended up being the Tanuki suit. Yay! So not necessarily Raccoon Mario from Mario 3, rather Tanuki Mario from Mario 3. It was the exact same power-up, except it was more suit than severed raccoon ears. And you could turn into a statue. So not much is lost here, it's basically the same power-up. We then dive into the first trailer for Super Mario 3D, as it was called at the time, and there he is, Tanuki Mario. He can whip his tail and hover, 
Oh, here's the flying. So you bring back Tanuki Mario for Mario 3 to end up just leaving out the entire point of Tanuki Mario for Mario 3? Did Nintendo just think we liked this part because it was cute? It's f***ing adorable, but that's besides the point. It's really weird they make this whole game's identity surround a classic power-up returning when it can't even do the thing it was famous for doing. Other than the power-up, Mario 3D looked fantastic for a 3DS game. If you held it far away and squinted, it could probably be mistaken for Mario Galaxy. And the gameplay was interesting here. They were bringing in loads of elements from the 2D Mario game, and incorporating them in a 3D Mario for the first time ever. Ending the level with a flagpole. When you get hit, you shrink down to small Mario. The way power-ups work, the stage timer. This was a very uniquely ununique Mario. There was stuff to discuss, but this trailer was far from great. I mean, they forgot to hold the run button in most of the footage, so this game looked slow. And pretty much everything here, we've seen Mario do before. A few months later, the game's final title was revealed, and I don't know why they couldn't think of this sooner. I think they were panicking on what to call this thing. Super Mario 3D Land could be the title of any 3D Mario game ever released. This game's sequel, Super Mario 3D World, could have been called Super Mario 3D Land, and this one, Super Mario 3D World, and these titles are so close to Super Mario Land and Super Mario World that I constantly hear people mess up these games' titles. Super Mario Land 3D, Super Mario World 3D. Some people have just called this Super Mario Land and Super Mario World, but on top of that, some people have called this Super Mario Land and this Super Mario World. Well, after a few more trailers, some with really odd amounts of poppin', Super Mario 3D Land released on November 13th, 2011 here in North America to critical acclaim and PETA's fist. PETA is the organization to listen to. They love animals so much, they would kill one to prove how serious they are. They saw Nintendo was releasing a new Mario game featuring an animal suit as a power-up and decided to go for the angle of this. They even made an online Flash game about it all. Well, now I gotta listen to them. Obviously, this was done as a way to get attention. If you were somebody going online to discuss how absolutely ridiculous it is that PETA thinks Nintendo's promoting animal abuse, congratulations, you did exactly what PETA wanted you to do. In Mario 3 had a frog suit, did anybody really think Nintendo was pressuring kids to think anything of that? Here's a gun, kill a frog. Super Mario 3D Land was lauded as the killer app the 3DS needed. It actually used the glasses free 3D effectively, with many saying it completely justified the gimmick, supplanting that it is an in fact, not just a gimmick and can be used to enhance gameplay. Because of that, and a very necessary price drop earlier in the year, this alongside the release of Mario Kart 7 kicked the 3DS in gear, and ever since it experienced a pretty sizable amount of success. Sure, it wasn't a runaway hit like the original Nintendo DS or Wii, but it did more than well enough to carry Nintendo throughout that generation. Mario 3D Land helped Nintendo sell a handheld that was truly its only hope during that era. The Wii was dying, the Wii U was about to release, so the Wii U was dying. The Nintendo 3DS was Nintendo's success story at the time, and without Super Mario 3D Land, it might have been a different story. So why does nobody give a shit about this game anymore? Super Mario 3D Land is the odd one out in the 3D Mario lineage. It's not a bad game, but most of the time people talk about 64, Sunshine, Galaxy 1 and 2, and then immediately jump over to 3D World or sometimes Odyssey. Many feel that with 3D Land's successor, there's not much reason to go back to it, as 3D World is just better in most ways. If you played 3D World, you sort of already kind of played 3D Land. I mean, these are two separate games, though there's very little distinctive about this one other than it being five inches. I picked this one up after netting some Christmas money in late 2011. I played through it and loved every second, and then I played it again and then again, this time 100% completing the game with no deaths. And when I say no deaths, I mean every time I was about to die, I quit out of the game and re-entered until I beat it first try. Look at that, no deaths, I did that. All right, let's try out Super Mario 3D Land again. Never thought this would be the intro. Super Mario 3D Land starts out simple enough, just a small gameplay demo, but after a while, we enter the screen where we can control Mario and understand what makes the game tick. Now, of course, if you're not seeing this on a 3DS screen itself with the 3D turn on, you're missing out, buddy. See, cranking that 3D slider up, we get a sense of depth. Objects in the foreground are now obviously in the foreground, things in the background, yup, they're definitely back there. This demo screen features an optical illusion, where in 2D mode, you have more questions than answers. In 3D mode, you have more answers than questions. Moving in a specific location, shows how the illusion works if you're only playing in 2D, which many of us definitely did. With the 3D effect being really picky, you had to hold it in just the right spot to get the effect to work properly. In a couple 3DS models, excluding the 3D feature entirely, Mario 3D Land still works perfectly fine in 2D, but you'll always have that faint feeling you're missing something. Starting up a new file, Super Mario 3D Land has a tree. 
and a lot of it. I guess this is giving story context as to why there are now Tanuki leaves all over the place because that was my biggest concern when this game was announced. How is that Bowser's doing? It was a rainy night. It's like if I saw a fire. Oh, I know this exact arsonist. I can tell by his signature flames. But breaking news, that isn't the only problem on the block. Bowser took Peach. And leaves. At least he left a note. That scared Mario so much he went to a world map. I love this little detail of Mario anxiously running in place. It only happens here in the beginning and that's why I like it. Hopping into world 1-1, I'm shocked. So, it's Mario. Duty Mario to be exact. Imagine a new Super Mario Brothers game where you can move in a 3D space. 3D Mario games up to this point were pretty different from 2D Marios in terms of the core design. You'd have multiple missions within a single level. Some games were more linear than others with specific ends to the levels, whereas some were more open-ended and about exploration. 3D Land is as linear as linear could be. You have a start to the level, get to the end of the level. There are no branching paths or much to do exploration wise. It's all about getting over this. That's not a bad thing. In fact, this does wonders for covering up that giant gash between 2D Mario and 3D Mario. These two things were pretty different, but 3D Land is if a 2D Mario was a 3D Mario. Most of the controls are just like they are in the 2D games, but we do have some extra moves from the 3D ones, like the long jump. But overall, 3D Land, in my opinion, has far more in common with 2D Mario than with 3D Mario. Again, not a bad thing, but it just makes it sort of underwhelming. Like, yup, it's 2D Mario in 3D. They did it. They did it well. Good for them. It's pretty cool considering this is what Super Mario 64 was originally envisioned as. Tons of levels just like the 2D Mario games, a flagpole at the end, but it had to be reworked due to hardware limitations, so we got multiple missions to do in fewer, larger levels. In this way, 3D Land is like the game God never wanted us to see. But this time, we've got stereoscopic 3D without the need for glasses. I should have never gotten prescription lenses. This entire game was designed around the 3D, how the camera angles are fixed, the perspective of it all, the controls, everything was crafted to make it so the game was enhanced by the 3D effect. Now, jumping feels more precise. You know exactly where you're landing with that slider up. It's never 100% necessary, but I do feel playing the game in 2D, I miss my jumps a tad more than in 3D. You can also change whether or not the 3D pops out or sinks in by hitting up or down on the D-pad. Come on, 3D is way more pizzazzy when it's popping out. When it sinks in, I feel like I'm looking at a goldfish. So, well, yes, I agree the 3D does enhance the gameplay. It doesn't enhance it nearly as much as impressions back in 2011 made me believe. The way people were talking about this game sounded like every game from this point forward will have to be in glasses-free 3D. Super Mario 3D Land has started a revolution. Like, no. This is one of the few 3DS games that truly benefits from leaving that slider on. In most games, it's a nice effect, but not much more than that. In 3D Land, it's a nice effect that slightly benefits the player by turning it on but not much more than that. These 3D illusion rooms appear every now and then, same idea as that demo screen. These are kind of cool. I guess they do the best job of immediately showcasing how 3D is beneficial, but I feel like these were designed in a way where they wanted to push a gimmick by creating a problem that wouldn't be there normally, and that problem is solved by said gimmick. Like, oh, you don't know where these coins are in perspective to you? Crank that 3D slider up, see? Like, no, nobody thought, oh my god, they finally solved the coin problem. The rest of the game, these perspective issues aren't an issue. The 3D is sort of cool here, but it's a total and utter gimmick. It's like in Star Fox Zero, where you use the Wii U gamepad to aim, you have to look between the gamepad and the TV screen, and it's difficult to get used to, but people who did get used to it liked it a lot. They were like, aiming works really well this way. It also worked perfectly in Star Fox 64. They just created a problem with Star Fox Zero to then solve it with their shit gimmick and they didn't even solve it. Well, the 3D works pretty well in Mario 3D Land. It's just not that necessary. It does benefit you to leave it on, but I've played most of the game in 2D, no problem. May have missed a few jumps here and there, but I, I can always shrug it off. But that was the big thing everybody lauded about this game, the implementation of 3D. What else does it have going for it? Existence? This is one of the most basic Mario experiences you could ask for. At least with the new Super Mario Brothers games, I mean, a basic Mario experience is what I expect. The title New Super Mario Brothers basically says that. But this is a 3D Mario game. To be fair, the title of Super Mario 3D Land kinda says basic Mario experience as well. However, when I lay out all the 3D Marios, this one has the least original about it, no doubt. Eight worlds, you go through each level, collect three star medals placed in each if you want. You need a certain amount to progress through the game, beat the boss at the end of the world, get a cute cutscene where Mario gets a letter showing the status of Peach, rinse and repeat. The level designs are good, but completely unmemorable. There isn't a single one where I get excited to replay it. 
Maybe the clock one, but that's it. Pretty much each of these levels has a theme we've seen done to death by Mario before. Oh shit, grass, snow, colors. Now at the very least, each world doesn't have a theme where every level in world one is grass themed, every level in world two is desert themed. No, the themes are completely random and I kind of like that. Variety is fun, it keeps things fresh. And again, the levels are well designed. They work great. They look wonderful on the 3DS. The entire game oozes quality. Like, this looks lovely. But it's all stuff we've seen before, and the stages are really short and really, really easy. There's an infinite one-up trick you can find in the second level. There's nothing wrong with easy games, but Mario 3D Land is so easy that it almost feels mindless. The levels just aren't too interesting from a design perspective. There's not really anywhere I get excited to play it. I'm just like, oh sweet, more shit for my thumb to do. Even the music is mostly just reused or remixed from previous games. The main power-up at play here is just taken from Mario 3 and you can't even fly! Sure, flying in these stages wouldn't work. So why bring back this power up? Why not create a brand new one? You can't even turn into a statue in its basic form. Now, you can find a variant where you do turn into a statue by performing a ground pound. Thanks? The boomerang flower appears as a new power up and it's just a worse version of the fire flower. Thanks. If you die a lot, you get the invincibility leaf. It's the tanuki suit, but you're invincible. Thanks! And then if you die a lot a lot, you get the P-Wing where it just completes the level for you. Great feature. There is the propeller box, which isn't technically a power-up, more of a box you can wear. It's pretty much the propeller suit from New Super Mario Bros. Wii, moving on. I mean, I always just want the Tanuki suit 100%. It's the best power-up in this game. But again, you bring back this power-up to just gut it of what made it great in the first place. At least there are a decent amount of new enemies, like Tail Bowser, that's his name. Many enemies now have Tanuki tails. Again, I think Nintendo got the wrong idea as to what we liked about the Tanuki suit. Well, it looked quality, but where's the tail? I haven't matured since. Nintendo has thrown this tail on so many things in the Mario universe around this time. Like, oh, well, people love the Tanuki suit. For the tail! But we do get these guys, this guy, those guys. There's some fun new designs in here. But they also put a tail on a block. That's a new enemy. Look at this list of characters. Pump the brakes! There are these cutouts of enemies that are supposed to trick you. It's an illusion where you can tell what's a real enemy and what's a fake enemy if you have the 3D on and I never mistook a cutout of an enemy for a real enemy. I, I don't know who they were fooling here. We have toad houses to visit every now and then where they give us some power-ups. Honestly, what I like about these is the camera angle when entering the house. This feels like a regular 3D Mario game. And this whole thing just feels cool to run around. It reminds me of the camera angles from the original screenshots at GDC. Like these make the game look way more involved than it turned out to be. The fixed camera angle works really well here, but makes the game feel so sterile, like, yup. This is all there is to see. There are these mystery rooms you can enter on the world map or in a level itself where you get this tiny challenge you have to complete under a time limit. Fine. Like most of these challenges are crazy easy, so they're not the most engaging in the world. Boss fights. They brought back Boom Boom from Mario 3 alongside his brand new female counterpart Pom Pom, but they're the only bosses besides Bowser, so you refight these guys a couple times alongside refighting Bowser a couple times. At least the final Bowser fight is pretty neat. It's this giant crumbling landscape, and he throws barrels like Donkey Kong. This is regular Bowser we're talking here, not Tail Bowser. And when those credits finally roll after three hours of playing from start to finish, Jesus Christ, this was a short and easy game. It's time to reflect on what I just played. It was okay. But then something magical happens. The game doubles in length. We get eight special worlds. I, I think that's just awesome. Many Mario games only give you a couple of these, but Mario 3D Land effectively gives you two times the stages. That's so cool. This is where we get the statue leaf. The poison mushroom makes an appearance every now and then. These are remixed stages, levels from the regular eight worlds revamped to be a bit harder. Some of them are pretty lazy. They just kind of barf cosmic clones in them where they mimic your every move and touching them hurts you. But hey, you unlock Luigi as a playable character after beating the first special world. He doesn't turn into Tanuki Luigi. He turns into Kitsune. Luigi because Luigi can't be a Tanuki. Are you f***ing serious? And then beating every stage as Mario and Luigi, collecting every star medal and getting to the top of every flagpole unlocks one final, brutally difficult, tough as nails level I beat it in one try. See, Super Mario 3D Land's ideal of brutally difficult is on par with a CNC. Oh, that is Super Mario 3D Land, or as many others call it, Mario Land Super 3D. I know I just dogged on this game, but I loved this thing. I replayed it constantly. It was always sort of my safe bet game. If I didn't know what to play, but I knew for a fact I wouldn't be starting Max Payne 3, I would just replay Mario 3D Land again. This is a good game, but critically looking at it right now, it's really basic. I feel like I've become less accepting of the status quo for a Mario game, which this is very much that. 
it for sure gave a massive push to the 3DS, not only showing how 3D can enhance a game, but also using the gyroscope. Save the 3DS. Mario 3D Land was kind of my junk food game. There wasn't a ton of substance, but it was a great time killer. The stages being so quick and easy made them perfect for a handheld. And while the game itself doesn't have a lot of personality to truly make it stick out compared to the other 3D Marios, what it did well, it did well. So I think that answers the question, why isn't this talked about as much? There's not much to say about it. It's a new Super Mario Brothers game in 3D. It honestly makes more sense to talk about 3D Land alongside new Super Mario Brothers than Super Mario Sunshine. Oh my god, I said something wild, didn't I? I should shield my eyes from such statements. I didn't have sunglasses, so I spray painted my lenses black. 